This is one of the seven-way testers that I built. Helps you test and diagnose the seven-way cord on a trailer, the marker lights and the lights and brakes, etc. I decided to make this series of videos because I got a couple requests to do so. And a couple reasons why I started building this was one we had one years ago, but it didn't really do much besides uh, the fuse feature in it. So it helped you detect shorts. The other reason was I'd have PDI techs that would use a jumper wire to test the seven ways if they even tested them. And when they did so, if there was a short in the trailer, it would just start melting the wires together. We wouldn't find this out until the customer came to pick up their trailer and the lights wouldn't work. They'd come get me and I would find there was a blown fuse in the vehicle. And then you find out there's a short in the trailer. They wouldn't be able to take the trailer. So I started building these, testing and improving on them. There's a few features in here that you may not be interested in. I put them in for a reason. Uh, one of those was one brand started mixing LED and incandescent lights in the marker light circuit, and it would do weird things to the lights on the box. So I came up with a solution for that. Another brand started using the side marker lights as turn signals also, so it would do both functions, and I wanted a reliable way to test that. Um, this isn't really a DIY or weekender type of project. It's more for the professional that's going to be using um, the box to test PDIs on a daily basis. So when I was trying to lay out how the box would look on the front and be usable, I don't have a lot of CAD experience, so I would use a piece of graph paper. And this was actual size of the front of this particular box I was building. So I would just try to figure out my spacing that way. Now the box I'm using in this video I got from Radio Shack and I don't think you can get them anymore. I bought a case of them so I was able to build a few boxes with that style of box. Um, I'm going to put links to other videos and I'll do a, a parts video at the end. Um, but it also came with metal lids, so I made a template at one point when I was building a few of these. And that's what you're seeing here, is the metal box. But when I didn't have the template, I would just use the graph paper laid on top to try to get my pilot holes started. So I start with a pretty small bit and then just work my way up. You can see the disaster there. I was trying to do two or three lids at the same time, but they're pretty fragile and I didn't have anything in between them. So they flexed and I broke some. So. I'm only going to be working on this one box. And then I use a scroll saw to cut out the square holes. I've tried a lot of different, I mean a lot of different ways and this scroll saw has been the easiest for me. Um, I just learned over time just cut on the outside of the line and then I don't have to do as much filing and modifying to get the different components to fit. Those are the holes for the meters. So I'm just doing a dry fit there. And then these are the holes for the fuse holders. Do another dry fit there and make sure I've got my cutouts correct before I do the rest. And then that's for the main main switch. 
and I like to step my round holes up. So you'll see I do a few different steps here to, before I reach the, the final size. That's for the LED fuse indicators. That row there is for the LED lights and for a couple of switches. And the bottom row there you can see is for the, the main switches. I'll show later on. I, I robbed these parts out of another box that I had built before and I'll show you why. I used them. Some, some of those switches were hard to reinstall. So here I'm just trying to find a good center point to put the handle in. Uh, in the past, I'd always forget to put the handle in, and I'd have to do it after the box was built. It would be a pain, so I remembered this time. And now for the actual seven-way socket, I just try to get it centered. Another thing, I always get some of the stuff too close to the edge. I've been lucky so far that everything's been fitting and working. But you have to be careful like with the switches and that you don't get them too close to the edge because then the lid won't close. This hole here is for, see I put a little cap there. That's so you can reset the amp meter. DC amp meters typically need zero points, so. If you need to use that feature, I just put an access hole so you could do that. I just pre drilled and put the mounting screws in just so that part's done. We will have to take that in and out. Now we're going to start putting the components in. You just want to make sure you get the amp meter in the position where the hole is so you can access the reset button. Like I said earlier, I had an issue with some of these switches putting them in, um, but it, it worked out. Some of the tabs broke off, so you'll see uh, here in a minute, I like to glue, glue them in because those round switches can spin. So I put a little glue on them so they don't spin. And here I'm putting in the LED lights. So I tried to find the colors that um, match with the wiring on the seven way um, back in the olden days when you pull the seven way apart it would give you a color of where to put them now I think they tell you uh, what function it does so it's hard to find a yellow so I use an amber for the brown that was the closest I could get to brown with the brand that I bought and then the the clear one is um, actually for your auxiliary or your backup lights and I just use clear for that one so you can see here I'm just hot gluing them into place trying to make sure that the switches are square I think I've got about a dozen hot glue guns and this one's my favorite I'll show you the model number here pretty soon but it actually heats up really fast it's small and compact so uh, it's easy to access these areas so it's a P306 from Ryobi so 
So this was the box I built. This was another brand. I'll make a video just talking about those, but I had it in the back of my Corvette with the bubble window and it melted it. So I decided to rob the parts out of that to build this box. So this is definitely not a soldering tutorial, um, but I did solder these, this component here. This is an auxiliary power. So this particular box doesn't have a battery inside of it. Some of my other ones do. So if you get a uh, unit that doesn't have power, you can use this to supply power to the box. So if there's no battery in the unit, the trailer, and you want to test the lights, you, can, you still can. You can easily add uh, auxiliary power to it. Another example is that you can test towed vehicles. So if you put a tow bar in front of a vehicle, you can test your wiring with this, but you would need auxiliary power to do so. So another thing I always forget is I like to put magnets on the back of mine. Totally optional, but you can stick it to the frame when you plug the seven way in. So a friend of mine mentioned that and we started doing it and it's it's worked out. But it's definitely not necessary. So these magnets are pretty strong, so you got to be careful. There's going to be some other videos that are kind of in between these, and I'll leave links to them in all of the other videos. So here I'm trimming off the, the screws so they're flush in the box and they don't have the point inside the box next to the wires. Not that there's anything that's going to happen inside of this box. I've had some I've been using for years. They've been dropped. And uh, I always give them to the new employees. Um, I've been doing that for years so that they, they're kind of testing them for me. You know, with in, inexperienced guys using them. And they've held up really well. So that's part one, just getting the box ready for putting the components in. Now we're going to get ready to wire it. There'll be four or five parts of this. I'm going to do a separate video on the actual parts and boxes that I used. And related video links will be in the description. Thanks for watching.